Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. As you might have guessed already, today we're making a rocket motor from sugar and potassium nitrate, also known as saltpeter. I first wanted to do this video as a fun project to celebrate 100 subs, but since then we've achieved 300 subs, so this is awesome, thank you everyone. I really hope y'all will like my own voice instead of the AI, but anyways, let's start with the tutorial. We first start with a random aluminum pipe and a cork that fit at the end. We butcher it in half with a cutter for each end of the tube. Then we take some sort of pliers or scissors and make a bunch of cuts at each end of the tube. We take a half cork and bend the cutted part on it on only one side. We will do the other side after putting the rocket fuel into the pipe. All the chemicals we need are potassium nitrate, sugar, and if you have it, iron 3 oxide, also known as fucking rust, which will act as our catalyst. To measure everything, we need a scale and a beaker, or a random container if you don't have any. Warning: Mixing and ignighting a mix of propellant is hazardous and can burn you severely. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Ok, now let's get into the math. We take the equation of reaction of our propellant, and with the molar mass, we determine the mass ratio we need to use to get the best combustion possible and the most thrust. Basically, math equals power. Rust as a catalyst slightly speeds up the reaction and thus increases the thrust. I recommend preparing an excess of rocket fuel in case you're not sure about how much you need. After powderizing everything with the mortar and pestle, we get to the dangerous part of casting the fuel. For that, we need to put the powder in a pan and then heat up to around the melting pot of sugar, which is between 160 and 190 degrees Celsius. The whole mix should melt into a sludge that can be poured, but we need to be very careful and not overheat too much, otherwise the propellant could react and catch fire. To ensure that everything melts together, we use a metal rod to agitate. It will also become useful when pouring the cast. Before everything melts, I prepared a support for the motor casing so that it's stable when we fill it. It's very important that you fill the casing from the bottom to the top while avoiding touching the walls with the propagol. Because this could lead to air pockets after cooling down and will make your rocket very inefficient. Here is a fail on one of my old rockets due to those air pockets. <laughs> also, if you overheat the rocket fuel, here is what happens. I've put some onto the metal rod and then make contact with the hot plate.
When you've poured just enough fuel, you can finally close the motor with the other half cork. The best way to dispose of the rest of the fuel is to burn it because all the solid products are very soluble in water. So let's do it! After combustion, the pan is very easy to wash with just some water and is actually a good fertilizer due to leftover nitrogen and potassium so you can dispose of it without any issue. In the final step, we will drill the hole that will serve as a nozzle. For that, we use a long drill and do it part by part to avoid decomposition by friction. Also, fuel will get stuck in the drill, so make sure to remove it. After all of this is done, store your motor in a safe place with, if possible, no humidity, because that would degrade the performances. Here is an example of the thrust test with my good old scale. I used a hot metal rod to ignite the motor, but I recommend using either electric igniters or a fuse with lighter. This is optional, but to measure the thrust, you need a scale or any mass measurement device that can be reactive to update the mass frequently, something like once per second is fine. Then you need to be able to film the measuring device as I did to decompose the video in frames and make a graph like this one on the test I showed. The next step is also optional if you don't care. With the graph we just made, it's possible to find the total impulse of your motor and rank it on the official ranking system with the letter, starting from A, the less powerful motors used in small amateur rockets, to S, which is the largest motor used by amateurs and can launch a rocket up to 117 km in altitude and at speeds up to 6000 km per hour. Ok, so to do that, we need the total impulse of the rocket, which corresponds to the integral of the thrust curve, but don't worry, there's an easier way to find out. An integral is basically the area under the curve like this, so by finding that area, we can guess the total impulse. Basically, by just approximating triangles and rectangles on this graph, we can find that the area is about 0.728 newtons per second, which corresponds to the half A class. It's quite bad, but the motor was degraded due to humidity. You will probably have better results than mine. So that's the end of the process. If you have any suggestions, go to the comment section and I'll try to respond to everyone. That was all for this time. Please leave a like and subscribe and see you next time for another video. Oh, elle est partie loin celle-là